Eddie Rodosovich, George Stoya here. Uh, game one in the books. Oklahoma wins 73 to nothing. A, uh, the largest margin of victory in like 106 years for Oklahoma today, George. Uh, Dylan Gabriel was really good. Even Jackson Arnold didn't miss a, didn't miss a beat when he took over. Uh, there's not a whole lot of negative to take out of game one, right? Oh, no. I mean, uh, when you win 73 to nothing, I think that that's always <laughs> a good thing. And it seemed like there wasn't a ton of negatives. Uh, you have the Drake Stoops injury. Brent Venable said AC sprain, I think is what he said after the game. Doesn't seem too serious. He was trying to get back in the game. Desan McCulloch sounds like he maybe tweaked his ankle. Sounds like it's not too serious. We'll see. Gavin Sawchuk, R. Mason Thomas didn't play today, but it sounds like they'll be back next week. Same with Robert Spears Jennings. So relatively clean game, healthy game. Uh, offense was spectacular. I think they scored on their first 11 possessions or something like that. Uh, Dylan Gabriel was incredibly was efficient. Fan. Yeah, I mean, it was his... Uh, I, I looked it up. It was his best completion percentage of his career today, 19 of 22, 308 yards, I think it was. Uh, I think four total touchdowns, so he was really good. The running game looked solid. Um, I mean, it was all just about as perfect as it could go. From start to finish, and Gavin Fre uh, Freeman, obviously, he today was kind of the uh, the big yeah. – I, I don't know about big story of the day, but seeing what he did on the punt return, I mean, there's a reason why they've – uh, become the, he's kind of become the, uh, known as a guy that, you know, I, we were talking to Jerry Kanick, we were talking to uh, Jane Gibson after the game. Yeah. This is stuff that when we talked about in uh, YouTube shows going into the season, that it was basically he was doing this kind of stuff every day at practice, and I think that we saw it today. Yeah, no, to, to have the validation of that, right, because we hear it over and over, and I even tweeted it out during the game. When Brent said that back in that Big 12 media days and the, the first day of camp, and I think there was people that, that rolled their eyes. I think even us a little bit were like, okay, like how much is that true? And for him to, first time he touches the ball, just like last year, he takes it to the house, uh, just electric. And, and you can tell the different things he can do on the field. So he was great. I think Jaden Gibson is another guy we got to talk about. I mean, it, he's somebody that – so disappointing back in the spring to drop the passes that he did. Even last year, the opportunities that he had last season, he just wasn't that playmaker. And then for him to go out today, and again, I know it's against Arkansas State, but that's got to be a huge confidence boost. And he talked about that a little bit after the game. But for him to come out and make a big grab, I think, was huge. Uh, I, I, the whole receiver group, to me, it, that was the biggest question mark for a lot of people coming into this season. For them to have so many guys, Nick Anderson, Andrew Anthony on the first you know, drive of the game. LV Bunkley Shelton playing quite a bit. Farouk uh, doing some different things. Drake Stoops early in the game. So to have so many guys, I think, is just huge for that receiver group going forward. You know, there was a couple of plays, too, that Andre Anthony, he probably has more yards today, but he was straight up tackled a couple times yeah. on, uh, you know, drawing pass interference calls. And I think that you're, you're going to be able to work with that. And, you know, I, I thought it was funny, too. Jaden Gibson, after the uh, game, told us that uh, he went up and he told Jackson Arnold that that was for dropping the ball in the spring game. Yeah. So it was uh, it was a very, very good performance today for Oklahoma. Uh, anytime that you're up by the margin that they were, I don't think I can remember a game uh, out here at the stadium in the fourth quarter where they were basically just running the clock out, like legitimately yeah. just waiting for the clock to hit 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, defensively today, George, I don't know how much to take out of it because, I, you know, they, they basically shut down Arkansas State the entire day. But there were some guys that flashed today, I, you know, in especially at positions that uh, we were kind of wondering about going into the season. Reggie Pearson made the big play or the big physical play. That's kind of what uh, we thought we were going to get out of him. Uh, you saw, you know, guys like Peyton Bowen flying around. They played 83 guys today. So there was a number of guys that you were able to see out there. Uh, just kind of your big takeaway defensively for a program that has really, really struggled on that side of the ball over the last couple of years. I thought they tackled really well. Um, you know, last time I was here covering Oklahoma, it was, you know, four years ago, and that was a constant issue was, was tackling. I, I didn't see many missed tackles today. I, I thought that was one of the big keys. I thought they were solid up front. You know, they, did they have the – I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, they didn't have the pass rush. I asked Brent about that after the game. He said, hey, look – they had a lot of seven, eight-man protections in there. We're only rushing four guys. They were also getting the ball out really quick. So we'll see what that looks like if it progresses. But I think the only, I don't think Arkansas State ran for 50 yards. So they're really solid in the running game. Uh, I thought Gentry Williams, yeah. somebody that, I mean, I mentioned him months ago. So I thought he could be a breakout star. We didn't hear about him a lot in fall camp. He was spectacular today. I thought he was really physical, came up and did a lot of things in the run game. He ran with guys down the field. They tested him, uh, and he made some nice plays. So I thought he was super impressive. I thought the safeties played really well. Danny Stutzman, Jaron Kanick, those guys are really solid uh, inside linebacker. I thought they had nice days. I, again, when you give up zero points, and I know – 
you know, Arkansas State missed a couple field goals, but they really buttoned it up when they got down there. I thought it was impressive. It was a really good performance, and it, it, you saw that competitive depth. They played a lot of different guys, uh, and of course you were going to see that a little bit, but it feels like they feel really comfortable with several different guys in several different positions. It was something we talked to Jaron Kanick about after the game, and Danny talked about it. I think that, you know, and Jaden Gibson even talked about it, it seems like, you know, culturally, this thing's in a really good spot right now. It, it seems like the foundation that you know you had to go through a year ago and the uh, the ups and downs of the season, a lot of downs for the most part. It seems like everything has kind of ironed itself out. It feels good right now. Uh, you know we're going to have to see how this thing progresses over the next couple months. But it seems like like is this different this year? than maybe it was a year ago when you're walking out of Lincoln and thinking, okay, this team has finally arrived, and then everybody knows how it went. Well, and I think Brent was asked kind of about that after the game, and just he, he talked about him personally feels way more comfortable and less anxious coming into the game, whereas last year, and you could tell that from Brent even in the post game, it wasn't um, you know an emotional deal. Like he was very calm and everything, and, and I think you know talking to Gentry after the game, he kind of said the same thing as Jaron and, and Danny, the comfort level level and what they're building here, I think, versus what it was last year. There's not a whole lot of miscommunication. They just feel a whole lot better about what they're doing defensively. They believe in it. Uh, they've seen it work. And so I, I think that it's just a, again, I think it's a comfortability. And we'll see. I mean, look, Arkansas State's bad. Uh, we'll see how bad they actually are. I don't know if they're, like, one of the worst teams in the country or <laughs> if they're, like, maybe OU's actually really good. But right. OU's going to be tested next week. Sure. SMU put it on Louisiana Tech. And, again, Louisiana Tech's probably not very good. But SMU's got some players. They're going to score next week. The I, Preston I mean, Stone kid's really good. Yes. He's a former five-star quarterback. Yeah, I, I mean, next week we'll really kind of found, find out a lot more. And like you said, last year you walk out of Nebraska thinking, well, little, this team, you know, they could make a run. Let's see what it looks like after five games. That's where, where you want to go. But in terms of an opener, uh, you could not ask for a more perfect start. Yeah. And the good news is, as you said at the top, Sounds like the Drake Stoops injury isn't going to be a long-term situation. I, I know that I think everybody had the same thought as he's going off the sidelines there. It, it did not look good. It looked yeah. like one of those, you know, clavicle or separated shoulder or something like that. But it, it sounds like he could have came back in the game. I think uh, talking to Chris Plank after the game, uh, he even said that, you know, he was basically asking him to come back into yeah. the game. So they didn't need him today. And, uh, you know, that's it. That 73 to nothing. There's not a whole lot to uh, really critique from Norman, Oklahoma today. It was a very good opener for the uh, for the Sooners for Team 129. So we're going to head back over to uh, the Sooner Scoop offices. We'll record the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast with Kerry Murdoch. And then uh, you can obviously catch all of our postgame coverage from Oklahoma season opener on Soonerscoop.com. Great time to join Sooner Scoop with the uh, the half off deal yeah. for uh, for new members. So just head over to Soonerscoop.com. It's going to be a quite a fun season if anything like uh, we saw today yeah. it was a, it was an extremely good uh, performance final thought from you just as far as what we saw today was there anything that really surprised you I mean you know I Tawi Walker it was good to see him run he's a good physical runner I was kind of interested to see how they were going to separate all those carries uh, you know it seemed like for the most part though they played so many guys today and you know I like you said at the top Maybe we're not given enough credit uh, as far as like just how solid Dylan Gabriel looked, and for that matter, Jackson Arnold. Yeah, I mean, Dylan was. I think he really jumps. I, and his performance will go unnoticed because, again, it was a blowout and all that. But for him to come out and be accurate the way he was, I think he started. I think eight of nine, nine, nine for nine, maybe. Um, you know, I, I thought he was very good, and and for him to have that connection already with it seems several different wide I mean him and Andrew Anthony clearly have a connection and you're going to want to see that build I thought Jackson was really good I, I, he was he was funny post game uh, someone asked him you know did you have any nerves coming in because we were up 45 to zero <laughs> no I didn't have any nerves but he came in he did really well um, I think he only threw maybe one or two incompletions um, as well today so the quarterbacks look really good uh, Davis Bevel we'll see what happens with him I, he's yeah, another guy that was it, 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 you just feel bad for him yeah um, but other than that, the only surprising thing for me today, Eddie, the fans didn't show up on Lindsay Street. Hey, you son of a bitches. We will talk to you on the unofficial 40, and then we'll talk probably talk about it on the Eskridge Lexus. We did all that work to open up Lindsay Street, and nobody showed up today? That's how you, that's how you uh, pay me back? Yeah. The new initiative on Monday might be just closing that thing. Just, just close it down. Yeah. Take up the pavement. Turn it into a dirt road. I th I'm sure the city of Norman would love that. For George Stoya... I'm Eddie Radosevich. Oklahoma wins the season opener 73 to nothing over Arkansas State. 
next week coming up southern methodist coming to uh norman and uh, like you said you know it, it might be one of those games that you got to go prove it again yeah. defensively for sure and we'll talk about that on the uh, the youtube show make sure you subscribe to soonerscoop.com on youtube as well we'll talk to you next week